This week I'm rolling up my sleeves and helping out on a farm in Devon as we celebrate Harvest Festival. Welcome to Songs of Praise. In today's programme, I help out at an ice cream and dairy farm run by Christians. The Bible basically tells me how to be a farmer, so I've made God my farm manager, and, and that's taken all the pressure off me. JB Gill visits a church which meets on a farm. We really wanted a Christian community to be started that had a brilliant relationship to the land. And I find out how churches across the country are sharing food worldwide. We're packing food that's going out to Zimbabwe for children with malnutrition. With a beast from the east at the start of the year and the summer heat wave, 2018 has been a challenging year for farmers. The farm I'm visiting is just on the outskirts of Exeter. But we're heading to St. David's Church in the city centre for our first hymn, led by Graham Kendrick and his band. This hymn reminds farmers and all of us that God is faithful to us, day in, day out, in good times and in bad. breaking sunshine this summer. In many places the harvest came exceptionally early, but the drought conditions have meant poor growth and low yields. One Christian family here in Exeter actually embraced the warm weather and diversified with a product that not only keeps the farm running, but puts a smile on your face. Rob Tavener's family have been farming here for five generations. 
I caught up with him as he tended to his herd. Rob, you've got a wonderful setup. What kind of farming do you do here? Well, we've got a herd of sort of grazing cows which stay out most of the year and they produce sort of delicious milk which can go into the ice cream. What is it like being a farmer today? It's really tough being a farmer, but it's a little bit like faith because you get challenges all the time. But the upsides are so good that, that it all makes it worthwhile. And, it, you know, the Bible basically tells me how to be a farmer. So I've made God my farm manager, and, and that's taken all the pressure off me, and I've become a better farmer with him as farm manager. So he will tell me when to buy cattle, when to turn out the cows, when to buy feed. So all the parables about the, the lost sheep and the sower and how to plough a field straight and not look back, all those things. If a farmer doesn't get faith, no one does. Although the taverners have had to spend more money on feed this year because of the poor harvest, their successful ice cream parlour run by Rob's wife Helen has helped to pay the bills. So when did you come up with the idea of making ice cream on the farm? Well, we've been making it for about 10 years and it was not the hugest part of what we did. And then six years ago, we had a bit of a rethink. That's it. A bit more water on your scoop. Oh, OK. There you go. See you and the then um, decided that we'd just focus on ice cream and make an ice cream parlour. Right. And, and it's just been the most extraordinary journey. It's fantastic. It's fun. It's creative. And it's using our own product. Um, like sprinkles next? Yes. Which, it's up to you how and you create. My daughter loves sprinkles on her ice cream, so, so this is a must. Yeah. Here. yeah. Faith and ice cream, not two things I would put together, but, no. you know, can you tell me a little bit about yours? Well, I think, for me, I always feel I've got someone looking over my shoulder, keeping an eye that I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. So, for me, it's a joyful place. It makes people happy and we have fun. And ice cream is, you know, finishes it off, really. Puts a smile on yeah. everybody's face. In fact, so, I feel like I need to... Can I have a little yeah, taste? Yeah, go. I have to. Go. I can't resist it. That's good. really good. Oh, good. Mm. Good. Delicious. Thank you. Oh, pleasure. Pleasure. Very uh, good. Am I just trying to steal this off now? Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> How important is harvest for you? Well, it's the culmination of the whole year and you need to have that faith that God will send enough rain and, and lots of sunshine to grow the crop. And is it a time for you to sort of stop and, and breathe? Do you get a chance to rest at that point? Well, it, it, there's a great sigh of relief when it's all in the barn and it sort of links very much into the, the harvest theme because everything's in and then that food is ready for throughout the winter.
I celebrate harvest here in Devon, our very own JB Gill, who knows all about working on the land, is visiting a farm in Buckinghamshire where, as well as the animals and crops, they have their very own church. Located in a tent in the middle of a farm in the Beaconsfield countryside, the church, Latimer Minster, was the brainchild of Reverend Frog or Ewing. Frog, I have to ask, yeah. a church on a farm, yeah. how did that come about? I became really excited about the idea of planting a new church that was going to be really close to nature but also brilliant for young adults as well. And um, so set about both planting a church and looking for a patch of ground. And so we managed to secure a 70 acre derelict farm. So that's where we are and we brought the two together. It's been a farm for over a thousand years. It was a Saxon farm and for about 30 years it had just been left to rack and ruin. So we've had a lot of physical work to do alongside the spiritual side of it as well. And so we've been trying to build, I suppose, our, our community and our people and our, our congregation, but also uh, work on the farm at the same time, and mm. bring that back into use. What's it like coming to church here in the middle of the farm? It's unique. I think we just love the fact that there's just the most beautiful surroundings. You've got views. It's just calm and peaceful. So you just see nature at its best and yeah, God's hand and his wonder. I love the fact that being on a farm in a tent means that actually you're not distracted by formality and what is happening in the room or in the tent is between you and God and it, it makes it feel more real to me. I find it helpful. I love it. And after the church service, the congregation get to spend time on the farm. So what was the primary purpose then? To build the church or to establish the working farm? I think for us it was a holistic vision. We really wanted a Christian community uh, to be started first and foremost that had a brilliant relationship to the land. I think particularly the more digital we get, the more we forget how to understand the seasons, how to understand nature. As a preacher, one of the things I've loved is, I think if you're an urban person originally, you probably think that a lot of the illustrations that Jesus is using are pastoral or romantic, but that was the work, that was job. And I think by becoming involved in agriculture myself, it's actually allowed us as a community and me as well to realise how much more there is about our work lives in the scriptures than we may have originally thought. What's the significance of harvest for Christianity? In the New Testament, Jesus uses it as a picture and as an image of all the people that are out there who God has a heart for and wants them to come to know him for himself. And so he says, go out into the harvest fields and bring the harvest home. And that's what he tells his disciples to do. And so for me, it's that great excitement when people come to know Jesus and it's that sense of, yes, that's what this harvest is about. It's a time for celebration. Every time a new person comes to know Jesus for themselves, there is great rejoicing on earth, but also in heaven too. So it's about that.